grade nine, so here's the next little thing, little task. So, I have given you a slightly different um, diagram showing the external structure of the heart, and you need to now add labels, and there's also a nice little game where you can practice that. You can go and have a look for the link on Google Classroom. So that's the external structure of the heart, and it's quite difficult to see or to imagine what it looks like on the outside, and I mean, I drew lots of arrows all over the place, but just go through that again and think about it. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to look at the internal structure of the human heart. So now it gets a little bit more, I think it's easier to try and figure out what's going on. All right, so once again, red and blue. So starting at the same point, okay, the left pulmonary veins are bringing oxygenated blood from the left lung. There they are, taking blood into the a bit small, the right atrium, okay? Here's the right pulmonary veins. Pulmonary means from the lungs, and veins means they're bringing blood towards the heart, but they're the only veins that are transporting oxygenated blood in the body. So, two, um, two pulmonary veins enter from the um, right lung, and two pulmonary veins enter from the left lung. These are actually behind, and they enter into the back of the right atrium. So I'm drawing four little openings over here. Now, the valve is divided into chambers, but there's also little valves. Okay, so if we look here, there's a little valve, and you will see on the video, okay, it will be quite nice to see. The valve separating the right, a left atrium, oh my word, see, I'm also making mistakes, okay, and the left ventricle, okay, Left atrium, left ventricle. Between the left atrium and the left ventricle, there is a valve. And it's known as the bicuspid valve. It's like two little flaps. All right? So I'm just going to draw an opening. And there's the two little flaps. And now you've got to imagine that they, it's like little doors. Okay? And it's bicuspid, which means there are two little flaps. And you will see in some of the videos, and you know, cardiologists, heart doctors, surgeons, they would call it the mitral valve. And you can even get a mitral valve replacement if there's something wrong with your bicuspid or mitral valve. Okay, so the ventricle wall, the left ventricle wall is quite thick. You can see that here. That cardiac muscle is much thicker over here than on the right-hand side of the heart. And the cardiac muscle in between the two ventricles is also thick. So remember, birds and mammals have got a complete separate left and right side to the heart, double circulation. One side transports or pumps oxygenated blood, the other side transports deoxygenated blood. But here is just where the blood vessels cross over. Okay? So the septum, just like in your nose, separating your nose into two halves, that is known as the septum. And this is the heart septum. Okay? So the left ventricle wall is thicker than the right ventricle wall. Okay, so let's just go back a bit. So remember we said that the, um, the blood was oxygenated in the lungs. So bringing blood back from the right lung and the left lung are two right pulmonary veins and two left pulmonary veins. They all drain into the back of the uh, left atrium. I made a mistake just now, all right? Then the atria contract and the blood pushes open these little valves and they are known as the bicuspid or mitral valve. It's like, they are one-way valves. So just like the doors or windows on your house, they can only open in one direction. So the blood pass, the little um, valves open and the blood um, is pushed into the left ventricle. And then those valves close. So they can only open down and then they close. All right, so now the blood can't go backwards. So when the ventricle contracts, the blood then is um, passed out through the aorta. But there's another valve, and I've got other diagrams to show you. So there's another valve at the base of the aorta, the biggest artery leaving the heart. Okay, so there's the aorta, and there the blood's taken to the top of the body. All right, so that valve over there, it's called a semilunar valve. But they sometimes call it the aortic valve because it's at the base of the aorta, all right? And it's actually got three little flaps. So imagine having 
you know, this, a, a, a little um, door with three, well, three flaps, okay? And they only open up. So when the blood passes or is pumped by the ventricle and into the aorta, those valves open up and the blood goes into the aorta and it's pushed forcefully to the top of the body. And remember we said the aorta branches round and down and then there's lots of arteries taking blood to all the different organs in the body. So blood is taken to the lower part of your body and all the organs in your abdominal cavity. All right. So every single cell in your body receives oxygen, okay, and will get rid of, well, nutrients, glucose, amino acids, salts, everything that it needs, that they need, and then deoxygenated blood is going to bring, um, return carbon dioxide to the lungs, and other wastes will be gotten rid of by the liver and the kidneys and your skin and your sweat glands, okay? But we're only talking about lungs and heart here. All right, so deoxygenated blood from the lower part of the body, all those veins are going to join, all right? So here is the inferior vena cava, the lower big vein, and that's going to open up into the right atrium. There's the label, all right? And at the same time, blood, deoxygenated blood coming back from the top of your body is going, lots of veins are going to join and become the superior vena cava, bringing blood back from the top of your body. So that blood also drains into the right atrium. Then the atria contract, and there's a valve between the right atrium and the right ventricle as well. There is, there is the label, okay? So this valve, you know, you can't see it from the side, but this valve is called the tricuspid valve. So it doesn't have two little flaps. It looks very similar to the aortic valve because it's also got three little flaps. Um, I always think of those, you know, on the space station, those, or on these, you know, sci-fi movies where these doors in the space station, they kind of open, you know, like circular doors. That's what, that's what it reminds me of, okay? All right, so blood from top body, blood from lower part of the body into the right atrium, the atria contracts, and then the blood forces that valve open and it passes into the right ventricle. But then th that valve can only open down. Those little valves can only open down just like your windows and doors. They cannot open up, all right? And that means that the blood cannot go back into the right atrium when the ventricle contracts, so it has to go out of the heart, all right? So when the ventricle contracts, that valve closes, Right, and now the deoxygenated blood is forced out of the ventricle through the pulmonary artery. So here, you know, here it is, and then it branches into two. So there's the left pulmonary artery, and there's the there it is, the right pulmonary artery. So those two arteries, they're taking blood. Well, it leaves as one, and then it branches, and um, this pulmonary artery is taking blood to the left lung. And this pulmonary artery taking blood to the right lung to get rid of the CO2. And remember, pulmonary means towards or away from the lungs, but these are the only arteries in the body that transport deoxygenated blood. Then CO2 is gotten rid of, blood is oxygenated again, and the whole thing starts again. Okay, so now just one more thing. At the base of the pulmonary artery, just like at the base of the aorta, you just can't see it very clearly here. There's also a semilunar valve. There's also a valve with three little flaps. Okay, so this is looking busy. And I think it's best, you know, make a photocopy of your notes of page number. This is page 65. And then you can practice it. And please watch the videos. It really helps to see the actual motion. It's very difficult to try and do that all on one page. So we'll go through it one more time. Okay, so from left lung and right lung. Oxygenated blood um, is transported okay, by the right pulmonary veins and the left pulmonary veins. They drain into the back of the left atrium. That The atria contract, and then the bicuspidal mit uh, mitral valve is forced open and the blood passes into the left ventricle. Okay, The, left, the ventricles contract, so the blood is forced out of the left ventricle. It can't go back into the left atrium because that valve can't open up. The bicuspid valve can't open up. It only opens down and then it snaps shut. 
So the blood is forced into the aorta, but at the base of the aorta, there's that little semilunar valve, making sure that the blood only goes up and can't go back into the heart. It's like a one-way system of valve. And then from the aorta to the top part of the body, and the aorta branches down and the blood is taken, oxygenated blood with nutrients is transported to every single cell in the lower part of your body. Now, deoxygenated blood comes back from the lower body, veins join up to become the inferior vena cava, which drains or empties into the right atrium. Blood from the top of the body, deoxygenated blood, is brought by you know, lots of veins which join to form the superior vena cava. They both drain blood into the right atrium, the, right, the atria contract. This little valve here is, um, is forced open that is known as the tricuspid valve because it's got three little flaps. But drawing it from the side, you can't see three, okay? And then the blood goes into the right ventricle. It's got a thinner wall because it's only pumping blood to the lungs, all right? So at the base here of the pulmonary artery, artery taking blood away from the heart, pulmonary towards the lungs, there's another little valve. And that's known as the semilunar valve. It's also got three flaps, making sure it opens up, but then it closes. So the blood has to go towards the lungs. And the lungs are going to be on the side here somewhere. All right, so this happens at the same time. Blood enters the atria at the same time. Atria contracts, valves open into ventricles. Ventricles contract, and the blood is forced out through the aorta and the pulmonary arteries at the same time. But like I said, please watch a video. All right.